Hello and welcome to PlayStation Racer. My name is Mitchell Morgan and today we're heading off for another world circuit race. It's going to be in America and it's one of the races that has changed since the 1.40 update. Before I do that, I'm just going to drop into the options and check the race difficulty to make sure that we are on the hard setting, which we are, so we're good. We'll come out of there and then we'll go back into the Americas and we're going to be heading over to Daytona International Speedway. Now the GT Cup GR3, we used to be able to change the settings and also use different tyres. Now, as you'll see there, you've got to be using the racing hard tyres and also the tuning has been prohibited. So I'm using the Ford uh, GT LM race car spec 2. You'll see there that I can't change anything other than the front rear brake balance, which I'm going to put to two for the moment. Whether I stick with that, I'm not quite sure. But there is nothing else that you can do and you've got to be running on the hard tyres. So that's the reason why I'm revisiting this one because my previous video is now not applicable. Right, so um, before we get into the race though, I just want to have a quick word about uh, traction control. Normally with traction control, I try and run with the traction control off. And that is around here, normally about a quarter of a second to a half a second faster for me. But when I run the race, I'm actually running this on traction control one because it just gives me that little bit more freedom and um, security as it were. So we are running on traction control one. I've got the brake balance actually set to center for the moment and the fuel map is set to one so that we can get through this traffic as soon as we can. Going to the first corner, I'm braking really late and just getting up the inside of those cars. And then, because all of the strategies that I tried didn't work, I tried a, a non-stop strategy and bits and pieces like that. None of those were really working with this set on the hard settings. So I found with this car, you really just gotta go for it. And it's a case of nailing every single braking point turning point and getting the power down and getting through this traffic as soon as you can. I dispensed with trying to get the clean race bonus from the very beginning because even if I tried to run this cleanly the AI cars were still hitting me with the hard settings and occasionally they were catching me out. So I have dispensed with the clean race bonus and I'm just really, really going for this. And if it means pushing up the inside of a car, then I'm sorry, but that's just what I'm doing to get this race done. If you're grinding this for credits, just put it on easy, go with easy. You'll be able to do this very, very quickly and easily on the easy setting and probably get the clean race bonus. But this is all about doing this on the hard settings. So as we come up to what I refer to as the bus stop, um, we are pushing up now into fourth place as we just come past this Supra. And you'll notice that I'm taking a very, very unusual line through the bus stop. Not one that you can normally get away with in normal online racing because of track limits. Uh, but this one, if you've gone in there a little bit deep or you're trying to get around a car or something like that, don't worry about jumping across the grass on the exit. You're not going to get a penalty and you will get away with it. Coming into the first corner, I'm braking heavily on the last of the little white lines. Like They're not chevrons, but the, the white line down the middle of the road. Braking on the last one of those. As we come up here, I'm looking for a little tiny brack patch in the middle of the road. I will probably slow this down and do a slow motion replay of my fastest lap at the end of this video. If you don't want to sit through the race, but you want to go through that slow-mo lap, then check the chapter markers in the video in the description and uh, just jump straight to those. Uh, but it, there's quite a lot going on in this lap and some of the little marks to note in the road are quite difficult to point out and I just want to let this one run so you can get an idea of how to get through the traffic. So simply by pushing hard, we're up into third place now. We are still on fuel map one at the moment. Haven't made any changes to any of the brake balance or traction control or anything like that. Slight nudge as we went through there as the second place place car was trying to move over. For this one I'm looking for just before that white line in the middle of the road 
and then you want to point straight at these yellow patches the four yellow patches for the bus stop you want to hit each of those four if you can and that will be what I have found to be the quickest way through there. You're going to find in this race, because I'm absolutely going for it, that I probably don't do the bus stop the same way twice in this race. So we've got 10 laps to do. Uh, as you'll notice there, we've got 2.9 laps of fuel, so basically three laps of fuel as we come across the line. My aim here now, as we've got up behind the leader, is just to try and stay with the leader and use the slipstream and potentially try and save some fuel at the same time. So you'll also notice that I'm going to be playing around with the fuel map later on in the race and also I am going to be doing a little bit of early upshifting and the like. So for the moment I'm just trying to stay with that Mercedes. It's got away from me a little bit at the moment. Breaking into this one, it's a uh, pretty much halfway down that little escape road on the left hand side as we go into this one I try and break at the beginning of the escape road there as we go into this corner sometimes I'll use gear number one just for a little bit of rotation and then up into second and third as quickly as we can and what we really want to be doing around the banking sections is tucking in behind another car and trying to get a slipstream. Unfortunately, we haven't got that opportunity, but we are very, very slowly catching the car in front. So I'm looking for the two board there, then the little black sign and the white line, getting it slowed down and just trying to pick up each of those yellow markers. You can see that I, I hit three and just missed the last one. But again, no penalties, but that has enabled us to close up quite nicely on Brunner up in the lead and at this point with 0.7 I'm picking up a little bit of a toe here which is absolutely perfect. We've got two laps of fuel and we are going to pit as late as we possibly can. I'm hoping to pit at the end of lap number five so hopefully we'll be able to get through this one. So you'll notice that I've changed the fuel map to two now you probably need to rewind the video to see exactly when I did that. But we're on fuel map two now that we are behind the Mercedes. And all I want to do is to stay with that car. If we can stay with that car with fuel map two or even fuel map three, then that will be absolutely fine. We can use the slipstream. We can try and save a bit more fuel. And um, that will then shorten our pit stop and either close us up to the leader or maybe even jump him in the pit stop. Who knows? Who knows? So still running quite nicely. Um, just be very careful about getting the, uh, the acceleration, so getting the throttle down. Just be very careful about the acceleration that you've got your steering wheel less than 45 degrees when you hit full power and that you introduce the power slowly because this car will go around very, very quickly. I wouldn't put the traction control any higher than two if I was you. And as I said, if you can get away with it, use traction control zero because it will save you just a little bit of time. That's probably one of the best ways, or oh, I was gonna say it was one of the best ways I've been through the bus stop, but again, we went across the grass at the end and my main priority here is just trying to close the gap to the AMG. I'm also watching the fuel at this stage and the tyres. So we've got enough for another lap and it looks like Bronner's going to go around again for another lap also. So we're just going to use this car for the slipstream. You can see now I've gone to fuel map three as we've closed up really, really closely. I could go for an overtake here, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to tuck in behind because I want to continue to use that car as a slipstream and use it for my fuel saving. He does tend to get away but then close up under braking. That's quite natural in motor racing. You get that uh, concertina effect, which is absolutely fine. You just want to try and make sure that you're reasonably close to that car when you get to the banking section, just so that you can slipstream that one as much as possible. So if that means dropping the fuel map down to three or even, oh, sorry, down to two or even one, then do that just to make sure that you are close up behind that car. Here I'm going to close up under braking, so I'm braking as late as I dare, probably halfway down that little slip road now. 
just to try and close up as much as possible. He's got a good exit, a better exit than I did, which has put him two seconds ahead of me now. I've dropped the fuel map back to two because we did drop back a little bit further than I would have liked. I don't think we're gonna beat him in the pit stops now if he pits, and I'm suspecting that he probably will. So can we close up under braking through the bus stop? Brake hard at that little black sign in the top right there. Over the curbs here. Again, just going across the grass. I'm really pushing hard because I want to get on the back of this Mercedes. Hugging the yellow line now as we go through the banking section. The tires still look okay. We've got half a lap of fuel, so I'm absolutely going for it here. We are going to dive into the pits. Hopefully he is as well, but it looks like he might be going straight on. No, he is diving in the pits. I stay to the left of the pits there because all of the AI cars tended to go to the right. And it did mean that if you caught up with them under braking, then uh, you could benefit from that. Um, we are going to need to fuel, but I am not going to change the tyres. The tyres look OK at the moment. However, one of the things I do wish I'd done, I wish at this stage that I'd moved the brake balance forward a bit just to take some of the pressure off of the rear tyres. I didn't do that. I do it later on in the race, but I didn't actually do that at this stage. Um, I was more interested in the fuel and getting out early. I have completely fueled it, so that means that I can absolutely lean on the rev counter as much as I need to and not worry about any fuel saving because I absolutely want to stay with this Mercedes now. He's a little bit out in front of us, as expected. We've moved the fuel mixture out to full power, so we're on fuel map level one. Priority now is to get on the back of the Mercedes and then we're going to want to do an overtake at an opportune moment. An opportune moment being a point in the track where we're going to be able to do the overtake, probably under slipstream, and then get a second or two advantage over the Mercedes so that he then doesn't get the benefit of any slipstream because otherwise that car's going to come straight back at us. So again, still, the strategy is still playing out in this one. It isn't a done deal with regards to strategy at all. So we're in seventh place at the moment, but there's quite a few cars that are going to need to pit. We're racing the silver Mercedes in front. We do not need to worry about any of the other cars. That was probably one of the best that I've done the bus stop thus far, but still you notice on the exit, we were still right over onto the grass. So we've now got a number of cars that are pitting. The first, second and third place runners are in. The fifth is in as well. So we've got quite a few cars pitting. But as I said, we're not racing those and hopefully we will be able to jump them and get past the pit exit before they come out so that we don't have to do any more overtakes. Closing right up behind the Mercedes now. Thankfully, it doesn't look like there are any cars exiting the pit lane, so we don't need to worry about that. We just watch for our braking point, those little black marks in the road. Just get a bit of rotation using second gear there. Up through the gears, third, then fourth. Just stay on the power through here, just jumping across a little bit of the curb. It doesn't settle the car, but I find that that then sets you up quite nicely for this little run down to this second gear corner. Sometimes I'll do this in first, very, very briefly, but mostly second and then up into third as quickly as we can. Coming down into this one again, sometimes it's first for a little bit of rotation, but immediately up into second as I did there. Up into third as quickly as you can so you can get the power down and don't spin the car around. I tended to find with this car that the sooner you can get into third gear, the better. So we're running quite nicely behind the Mercedes now. I'm not going to overtake. I thought about it, but then backed out. But the opportunity has presented itself and I've actually gone for it. We've gone for the overtake at this point and I changed my mind and I've called it out with owner rating afterwards. I was going to stay behind and then I changed my mind at the very last minute, knowing that I can come through that bus stop quicker than the AI car. And I felt that I I might be able to carry more speed down this part of the track and build out that gap to the Mercedes behind. And that was the reason why I quickly changed my mind and just dove to the inside, let it run, got the overtake done, 
and then just pushing and pushing and pushing to try and get the gap to the car behind built. So as we go through the first corner, we've actually built the gap out to two seconds. That is going to come down a little bit because I was a little bit, um, a little bit wayward around some of these corners, I should say. They, they weren't optimal and I was sort of getting into that end of race panic mode. Have I actually managed to do this? I'm going to be honest with you, this is not the first time I tried this. I tried many cars, I tried lots of strategies. This was the one that worked for me. And even at this point, I was thinking, have I done enough? Is that Mercedes going to come back at me? Is it running with a lower fuel map and he's going to wind it up to one and then come back towards the end of the race? Am I going to spin it and have a problem which is going to let him back through? I've got all these things going through my mind at the moment. Um, we've just done a 146.6, which is our fastest lap so far, which is good going. The gap is coming down. It's uh, 1.1 at the moment, although just going up ever so slightly at the moment. So we did have over two seconds and he's halved that gap already. I've moved the brake balance now out, you'll notice, to minus five. It's full to the front because if you look at the tyres, in particular, the right rear tyre is now quite badly worn. And the Ford was moving around a bit, quite a bit, and that was enabling me to uh, not be quite so good through the corners. It wasn't enabling, it was causing me not to be quite so clean through some of the corners. So I have backed off on the brake balance now. And as I said, really, I wish that I'd done that in the pit stop phase and just save that rear tire a little bit more. It would then be about half worn rather than pushing two thirds worn. But we're on lap number nine now. Again, watching for that dark mark in the road, second gear for rotation through here. Please rewind and pause the videos if you want to have a look at the braking points and the gears in more detail. Up through the gears through here, just even in fifth as we go through that corner. Fifth all the way up to here. I'm slowing it right the way down to first. Just nerves, I really didn't need first there. Second would have been fine, but nerves kicking in just a little bit. Breaking at the um, midway through that little escape road there, down into second for this one, getting it rotated around, up into third. Get down onto this yellow line as much as you can. You can actually straddle this yellow line. Um, I don't know whether it gives a penalty in this particular race. I know when you're running online, then it will give you a penalty if you drop underneath that yellow line, but no problem in getting right the way down close to it in this particular race. Third gear through this little bus stop was fine, I found, and that's probably the best that I've done at the bus stop all race. Hit all four of the yellow blocks on that one felt quite good. Um, so yeah, definitely third gear was my gear of choice through that particular corner. So then we're just having a run to the line. As you can see, I'm just staying down on the bottom of the track. As you go across the line here, you can straddle the white line quite easily just to save yourself just a tiny little bit of time. But then come out to the side looking for that last white mark in the middle of the road, getting it slowed down, down into third gear now. Just letting it run through here, just using the curbs watching for the dark line in the middle of the road there, down into second gear, rotation as the fireworks are going off in the distance. Rear tire is quite worn now and I've got the radar on because I want to see where that car is behind me. One other thing that I have started to do is, I was racing with the dash cam for a while, the one with the gauges. I've moved back to racing with the bonnet cam because you don't have the benefit of the mirrors. And what I was tending to find is I was not only driving forwards, but I was also driving backwards. By that I mean I was often looking at the car behind, catching, and then that was putting additional pressure on me. So I've turned the mirrors off and I've got the radar on so I can see when a car is getting close. And occasionally I'll just look out the back to see where the cars are behind. Um, but most of the time, I'm just running with this view now so that I am, I've got less distractions. That was beautiful through there, really like that 
through the bus stop. Again, if you can hook up those four yellow patches, it really, really is very, very nice. It feels great when you go through there. Just hugging the yellow lines at the bottom now. I've got 0.3 of fuel as we're going up towards the line. We're probably going to drop to two or even one, and then we're going to cross the line for the win. And I don't know if that was our fastest lap. I don't think it was. It was a little untidy in places, but that is how I managed to get first at the GT Cup in the GR3 category at Daytona Road Course. Five seconds in the end ahead of Brunner in second place, nearly nine seconds behind the third place runner. It wasn't a clean race, I wasn't expecting that, but this was all more about getting the gold. So let's go and have a look at the fastest lap in slow motion. So we're going to pick up the action just at the end of the lap and the, what I'm looking to do here is to get over to the right hand side of the track a little bit more following the car in front and you're looking for the last of these white lines in the middle of the road. Let me just rewind that a bit, it's marked in yellow there but you'll see there's one, then there is a second one, then as you're going through this corner there's a third one. So as we go across the line, now is where I'm going to start counting, so I've got one, there, then two, drifting across the track, we've got three, and then we've got four, and we bury the brake pedal and slow it right down. So it's the last of those white lines in the middle of the road. Second gear, and then up into third through here. Third so that we can get the power down without spinning it around. And then you just wanna pick up the curb on the right hand side, you can see there's a line in the grass there, the curb on the left hand side, and now we're looking for a little L shaped black mark in the middle of the road here. So you can see it just there, it's very, very, very small. I'm doing this in the dark so that these items are harder to see than when you're doing this race in the daylight. Um, but in the daylight, you can pick them up quite well. Second gear through here. You can use a lot of the exit road there. I mean, it's not quite an exit road, but that bit of track, you can get right over on that if you want to. Then come across to the right hand side a little bit. You're looking for this little yellow bit of curb there. As you see that, start to think about moving across. You can cut that curb a little bit. It does unsettle the car a little bit, but I tend to find that okay. And then you're looking for either that big black mark on the left hand side, or if you're feeling really brave under the brakes, the green part that was highlighted in the, with, with the green circle there. Second through here, pushing up behind the AMG at the moment because I'm trying to get the slipstream. And now you're looking for the little slip road on the right hand side and I'm going to break in this one a little bit early just before the beginning you see the yellow circle actually I was trying to break on the green circle a little bit more frequently during the race for that one I tended to find that that was a little bit better and then it's a case of just continuing to run around this corner getting the power down as soon as you can I'm calling out the braking points rather than the gears at the moment, but you can see the gears that we're running through as we go through the lap. And here it's a case of just keeping it down on the bottom of the apron, just above the yellow lines. You can straddle those yellow lines if you want to, but I tended to just sit above them because if you do drop below, then obviously you can unsettle the car and you can get uh, track limits in online racing. So now I'm getting up behind the Mercedes, I'm going to make that move, but I'm looking down for the number two board. So we've got the number three board that we're approaching now. Then you get the number two board, so watch out for that. And then shortly after the number two board, you're looking for the white line or what is a little sign on the catch bench thing on the right hand side there. Brake very, very heavily there. Try and get the right hand wheels on that yellow part, the left hand wheels on that yellow part, the right hand wheels on this yellow part, and the left hand wheels on that yellow part. I didn't do it in that race, but that's basically what you want to do to get through that bus stop as quickly as possible. And then it is just a case of letting it run all the way to the line 
Getting down low on the yellow line, again, if you want to, you can straddle the yellow line. Theoretically, it is the shorter way to the finishing line. But again, I like to just run that line with my near side tires, just so that I didn't drop down underneath it. I've just come off the line for the moment, just to have a little look and see where the car behind is. And then going to come back towards this little painted part of the track. I'm getting right on the yellow line now to cross the line. And that was my fastest lap. It wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but that's how I did it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. And I look forward to seeing you on another one coming very, very soon. For now, take care. Bye-bye.